Welcome back. I'm Pastor Cat. This is your weekly encouragement. Well, we are starting a brand new series this week. Let me give you a quick background. I'm standing in line at the grocery with the beautiful wife and she looks up and she sees a magazine. This magazine to be specific. This is the 50 most influential figures of the Bible done by National Geographic. Now this struck me so strongly that I had to not only own the magazine but I thought let's take a little bit of time and work our way through uh, those 50 people and see what it is that they've done to influence culture. Now, when National Geographic says the most influential, they don't necessarily mean the most influential theologically speaking, they mean the most influential when it comes to culture. How those stories from the Old Testament, the Minor Prophets, I believe there's two in there, and the New Testament, how they have impacted culture in terms of art, in terms of architecture, in terms of story and song. As an art minor myself, I did uh, major in theology, but my minor is in art, and so this struck me as fascinating. And so to launch in, we are starting right at the beginning with Adam and Eve. Now you may notice the painting behind me does not include Eve. You have Adam on what it would be like stage left, and you have the father on the right. This painting was done by Michelangelo. Now, it's a little tricky when you try to date something like this because he was painting the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. And he painted it from 1508 to about 1512. So somewhere in the middle of that, this piece was completed. It is the creation of Adam. As we think about Adam and Eve, there's a couple kind of signposts that we have to deal with. Of course, number one is the fall of man. Number two is, of course, the creation of Adam, and then further on, the creation of Eve. Of course, Adam is naming the animals, doesn't find one that looks like him, talks to God, God creates Eve, then the fall happens. That's roughly the way it goes down. Of course, they um, are the mother and father of Cain and Abel, which becomes an issue here in in a couple weeks. But really, to launch in, we do have to start in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 6, uh, just a single verse, verse 23, kind of explains to us why this story is so important. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So Adam and Eve, the first beings ever created, the first humans on the planet, they were born sinless, yet they fell into sin. So we now have to deal with that in the long term. Now, it's great to know that we don't end there, that the idea that the wages of our sin are going to cause us eternal damnation. We know that there is an escape route from that, but I thought it was important to actually examine what happened in that circumstance. We find the story, or at least a portion of it, over in Genesis chapter 3. If you want the whole story, you really should start at Genesis 2, uh, verse 15, 17, somewhere in there, and read all the way through chapter 3, verse 19. We're just going to focus on chapter 3, 17 through 19. It says this, then to Adam he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall grow for you, and you will eat the plants of the field by the sweat of your face. You will eat bread till you return to the ground, because from it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Quite possibly you're dealing with this exact situation in your life where the sin around you is making more work for you or more stress for you. You're having trouble perhaps during this time of COVID lockdown, putting food on the table or getting enough hours work, or maybe you are just sick and tired of seeing the people that you're cooped up with. I completely understand. The good news is the grace and mercy of the Father through 
through Christ takes care of all that and gives us a straight path to the Father, bypassing the sin. And when I say bypass, I don't mean that God forgets about it. I just mean that there has been a, a way made for you. Yet, all of it began right here with Adam and Eve, simply because of the pride inside Adam and Eve herself. But here we're focused on Adam. The pride specifically inside himself where he wanted to be more like God. I fall into those traps all the time where I think I know so much better than everyone else. That I'm willing to throw everything out the window so that I can do the thing I want. If you find yourself in that situation today, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to pray for you, share a little more scripture showing kind of where this ends. Because in this series, we're not gonna to get to that grand finale for a few weeks. Well, as promised, I was going to explain a little bit about how this has impacted culture. Obviously, there are stories and there are dramas and there are songs, but I'm going to focus on a couple paintings. The first of which you've probably seen before. It is The Fall of Man, done by uh, Peter Paul Rubens. Again, uh, between the years 1628 and 1629, the painting is here, as you can see. Not only is it gorgeous, not only does it really point to that time, in the mid to early 1600s, but it is absolutely perfect. You look at how deep the colors are. The brush strokes, by the way, seeing it in person, the brush strokes are almost unnoticeable. It is such a deep color, a true master. Of course, this was commissioned uh, by the Catholic Church uh, at the time that Peter Paul Rubens did it. Again, it's something that the Bible and the church and the local people are willing to pour into artists to have their work put out there in things they were interested in. And Adam and Eve is one of those stories that really has captured people's imagination. In fact, so much so, I really had trouble narrowing down the three pieces of artwork we're going to look at. So here's just a collage um, of the paintings that also we could have chosen with the uh, artist's name and year behind them. So you get kind of an idea of how prolific a topic this was. So on top of all of these works that are very prolific because it's really captured the imagination of the believer in the 1600s and prior to that and even up till today, I did want to close with my favorite rendition of Adam and Eve. Now, the painter is not known. We have no name. In fact, we don't even have a date. Our best guesses would be the late 1700s. Now, this is simply called Adam and Eve from the mural in Abretha and Ashteba Church. I'm going to put the name here because I am sure that I just said it wrong. This particular image was taken, a photograph rather, of this image in 2006. To my knowledge, uh, the mural is still there. I just love the absolute kind of innocence of it. If you know the story which is being depicted, it's after the fall and God says, Adam, um, where are you? Where are you hiding? And he comes out, right? And he's covered himself up. Why are you covering yourself? And that's when Adam has to confess that he has entered into sin because he wanted that knowledge that only God can have. So often I feel a little like these two, a little bit chagrin when I have fallen short of the glory of God myself and I have to come back to the Father and ask for forgiveness. Well, I pray this has been as encouraging to you as it has been to me. God bless. I'll see you next week. Be encouraged. Mm -hmm.